We began a new series last week called Hear and Be Healed. Hear and Be Healed. And uh, the Lord quickened us in the service that He it's His will and that we are to experience an increase of healings in our midst. People being healed like popcorn popping. <laughs> well, that sounds good, doesn't it? So be it. You know, uh, healing has always been a big part of what God does in the earth. We were about to read Exodus. God revealed Himself to His first covenant people, Israel, as their healer. And when Jesus came, His earthly ministry, He spent uh, an enormous amount of time ministering, healing to people. Amen. Didn't He? Yes. This continued throughout the book of Acts in the early days of the church. Well, why would we think it has changed? Amen. He doesn't change. Amen. So healing's big to Him. Yes. If it's big to Him, or to be big to us. Yes. Right? right. Yes. Or to be big to us. Uh, in Exodus, the 15th chapter, like we said, the Lord revealed Himself to His people as their healer. Exodus 15 and 26. 15, 26, He said, If you'll diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. Now let's just stop right here. What does this begin with? Uh, what's the title of the series? Hear and be healed. This starts with an if, doesn't it? If you do something, I'm going to do something. Now, many have twisted the, uh, I shouldn't say twisted, they have replaced the Word of God with the traditions of men. And one of the most subtle and dangerous doctrines in the church is that called the sovereignty of God. And it sounds like it's honoring God and like it's a higher level of submission and awe to Him and His will. And yet it's, it's an underhanded way of blatantly contradicting the Scriptures. People leave the impression that everything's up to God and that everything that's happening, whether we understand it or not, is His will. But no, many verses start off with an if. <laughs> is that right? If. If God is controlling everything no matter what, there can be no if. There is no if. It's just God's going to do what God's going to do, period. No if you do this or that, He's going to do or not going to do. No, it can't be any if, if God really is in control of everything and doing everything. There can be no if. But if there's an if, then that means it's not all up to Him. He's left something up to us and that we're going to have a different outcome depending on what we do or don't do. If we make a bad choice, how is that God's fault? If we choose to ignore what He said and do something different than what He directed, how is the outcome of that the will of God? That's equal to saying our disobedience was His plan. Our refusal to obey was His will because everything is somehow the will and plan of God. No, no, no. God has really created us with a completely independent free will. We can choose to love Him or hate Him. We can choose to follow Him or run away from Him. We can choose to obey Him or rebel against Him. And sadly, much of the world 
has rejected him and disobeyed him, which is why the world's in the mess that it's in. Because when you reject God, you just rejected and pushed out your source, your protector, your healer, your provider. Come on, can you see this? When you push him out, you, you're going to have a collapse. You're going to have destruction, stealing and killing and destroying the work of the enemy. If you don't want him, there's only one other choice. People say, no, I'm my own man. I'm doing my own thing. You're kidding. There's no such thing as a man or woman living independently in this earth of any spiritual forces. You're yielding to one or you're yielding to the other. Hmm? And if God is not your God, Satan is. Whether you acknowledge it or not, it's a fact. Jesus told some of the most religious people of his day, you are of your father the devil. That's why they made, it made him so mad. They wanted to kill him right then. They wanted to stone him. That's one of the reasons why they, were, they pushed his crucifixion. They hated him because of these things. But he wasn't trying to be mean or slandering them. He's telling them the truth. And if you'll accept the truth, the truth will do what for you? It won't hurt you. It'll make you free. They needed major repentance. They needed to come to him. Amen. Get saved, get forgiven, get released. I mean, the church is about to happen, right? That could have been a big part of it. Some of them were. Most of them were not. But what does this verse begin with? If you'll do what? Listen. Diligently hearken. We'd say, if you'll listen. If you'll listen to the voice of the Lord your God and what? We'll do it. Do what's right in his sight. Give ear to his commandments. Keep all his statutes. I'll put none of these diseases upon you, which I brought upon the Egyptians. This is judgment talk. For I am the Lord that heals you. Amen. <laughs> they weren't the Egyptians. They weren't his people. And God wasn't their God. So he's not their healer. In fact, they're rebelling against him. But he said, you're my people. So I'm going to protect you from all that stuff, and I'm going to be your healer. Thank you, Amen. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, in this new covenant, is it a better covenant yeah. or a worse covenant? Yeah. Did we lose anything by the coming of Jesus? No. Hmm? Could you say, boy, I wish I could be back under the old covenant because I could, I could have a healer. Come on. Wow. No, no. Anybody know that a $100 bill is better than a $50 bill? Yes. Now, if you don't think so, you're confused. A $100 bill is better. There is no exception. There is no reason why it's not better in every way than a 50. Why? Because the 100 has got the 50 in it plus. You know why our covenant is a better covenant than the old? We got everything they had plus, 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 plus. Thank you, Lord. He's still Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals you. Jesus demonstrated it all through his ministry, healing, 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 healing. It kept on happening in the book of Acts, continues to this day to everybody that believe it. He said, I am the Lord that heals you. Say it out loud. I am the Lord that heals you. Can you take this verse directly for yourself? Yes. Hmm? Is he your God? Yes. Are you in covenant with him through yes. Jesus? Yes. Then he's my healer too. Amen. Say it out loud. The Lord, the Lord is my healer. Is my healer. You, are you are the God, the God that, heals me. that heals me. You're my healer. Just like you're my Savior, you're my healer. You're my protector. You're my, my provider. Everything you confess that he is to you, he will become to you. How many are, are settled he's your Savior? Come on, let me see. Are you settled? Are you struggling with that? Then you should be just as settled that he's your healer. Because he said he is. I am the Lord that heals you. Go with me over to Luke 5, and let's, uh, let's look further into this. Luke 5, we saw that in the 
In the Old Covenant, the Lord revealed Himself, I am the Lord that heals you, and He never changes. Nobody can say He used to be, but that's not true. The great I am is always the I am, and He, I, he is and always will be the Lord who heals us. In Luke 5 and 15, it says, So much the more went there a fame abroad of Him, and great multitudes came. They came together to do what? Hear. To hear and to be healed by Him of their infirmities. They didn't just come to be healed. What's mentioned first? Hear. Hearing. They came to hear. Now there's a, a lot of folks want to be healed, but they're not so big on hearing. And that's a problem. Because we not only must become convinced that God is our healer and it's His will and He has the ability to heal, but we need to learn how He does it. Amen. How He does a thing. We, we need to learn His ways. The psalmist talked about that one group of people saw His acts, but another people could understand His ways. We don't just want to be marginally aware that God can do a thing. We want to be completely convinced of His will and then move past that to learn how. Amen. Oh, come on, when everybody say how, how, how He does it. You know, take for instance, hearing from God. You'll hear me say, and I know a lot of you know exactly what this means, uh, but some, to some people it's a new thought. I'll say the, the Lord told me. The Lord spoke to me. Now sometimes people hear something like that and they go, that guy thinks he's actually hearing from God. Talking to God. One fellow said, man all these people, uh, you know, said they heard from God, heard from God. That scares me. That bothers me. Another fellow said, it's all these people that never hear from God. It bothers me. <laughs> well is it possible for us to hear from the Lord. Yes. Of course, we that's a reality to us. But to a lot of people, that just sounds bizarre. And they say, man, if you're hearing voices, you need to go be checked out. <laughs> and that's why a lot of times I'll say, I didn't, I'm not saying I heard a voice. Though that's possible and that happens too. Yeah. But just because you heard an audible voice doesn't make it God either. You can have some spiritual experiences that are as real as they get and yet are not God. Amen. And no matter what you think you hear, you should check it. Number one, by this written Word. If it disagrees with this, I don't care how real it is, it can't be God. And then secondly, if you're born again, you've got the, the Holy Spirit in you, the author of the book lives in you. And He will bear witness to what's right and what's God. You, so you, you check it out by the written Word and by the witness. But when we're talking about that, we're saying, I, I heard from God. I heard from God. You're talking about this witness. When He says, they came to hear and to be healed by Him of their infirmities. What came first? Hearing. 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 And Jesus said, Him that has ears to hear, let him hear. Well, now, most of the people he's talking to had these things on the side of their head. I mean, it'd been hard to find people that didn't have these. But so, what's he talking about? Well, it's not just the sound of it bouncing off of your eardrum, the, the pressure wave, it's hearing inside. It's getting it, as we'd say. Hmm? I got it. You ever heard somebody say that? I got it. It took me a few years. <laughs> a few days. I heard it 35 times. But I got it. I got it. Which is why you need to keep hearing. And it's not that these things are so hard to understand or you've got to be so super spiritual. It's simply that the enemy, the God of this world, is doing his best to hide it from you. That's right. To blind the minds of people all around this planet. Yeah, 
It's, it's, and when, when you've seen something of the truth of the words of God, it wasn't like it was so super complica complicated, just the opposite. You saw it and you thought, man, why didn't I already see that? Right? It was just right there. Well, the reason being is because the enemy is doing everything he can since you're in this world and, and the curse and darkness and his spirits are here too. He's trying to block it. He's trying to interfere. He's trying to, to cloud it, hide it. So you got to be persistent. Amen. I said you got to be persistent and not, not think, well, I'm not smart enough to get this. It ain't about you being smart. You got to realize what teacher you have. Amen. You've got a teacher that can make it clear to anybody. Is that right? Yeah. He'll speak to you in the language you understand. He, it's not a matter of being smart enough, and it's not a matter of you having to do some great thing. You just have to be persistent. Amen. Come on. You keep on looking at it. You keep on. You, there'll be times uh, that, that in your heart you'll know my answer is here in this subject, in this teaching, in this passage of Scripture. You'll, you'll just know it. My answer is here. But you won't have it yet. And your head will go, what? We've read this five times. I got it. He say, shut up. Amen. <laughs> I know it. My answer is here. And so you look at it again. And you listen to it again. And you look at it again. Don't go by your head. Go by your heart. Trust in the Lord. With all your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding. And if you'll just be persistent. The enemy won't be able to keep you from it. Amen. He can't stop you. Amen. The best he can do is hinder. Amen. He's the hinderer. Paul himself said, on a, on a, he said, I would have come to you once and again, but Satan hindered me. Right. Didn't say he stopped him. What did he say? Hindered. He hindered me. Say it out loud. The devil, the devil. can't, can't. Stop, me. stop me. He can't stop me. Can't stop me. He can't stop me. What he tries to do is wear you down, hinder you, bug you, pester you, wear. Is that right? Yeah. He can't stop you, but if he can get you to give up, right. that's the same thing as stopping you. He didn't stop you. You stopped yourself. Right. Amen. Come on. But we live down here in the flesh and things can get wearying and tiring. But thanks be unto God Glory. who gives us the victory Amen. through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph. You just need to get up every day and say, I don't know how. I don't know the wherefore and the why and the way, but I know this. When the dust clears, I'll be standing here with the victory. Oh, somebody say, with the victory. With the victory. So what do I need to do in the meantime? I need to hear what he's saying to me. And I need to keep hearing it. Because there are things that I'm hearing that I've heard repeatedly that I have not yet heard. Yeah. Amen. That's right. I need to keep hearing till I hear it. Right. How can you tell? You won't have to ask anybody. You will not have to look to your neighbor and go, did I get it? <laughs> <laughs> You'll go, that's it, that's it, that's it. There will be excitement. There will be a quickening. His word is a quickening word. What did they come to do? Hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. Now skip down to the 6th chapter and the 17th verse. This wasn't written in chapter and verse, so this is not too much later. You see the same thing. Letting you know this wasn't just a, a, a once or twice situation. This was an ongoing thing. In uh, Luke 6, 17, Jesus came down with them and stood in the plain in the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Zidon. And they came to what? They came to hear him and to be healed 
of their diseases. Now, do you notice what book we're reading? Luke. Dr. Luke. And that's why he, he adds some detail about things concerning healing that you don't see in all the accounts. Why? Well, this is his area. This is something that's very, uh, you know, he, he's a doctor. And he'll, he'll mention details and specifics. And what's, how, he's telling us, don't you think Dr. Luke would be interested in how people are getting healed? Yeah. Yeah. And of all the things he could tell us, what does he keep telling us? The first thing he did, and they, they came and heard. And then they got healed. They heard and healed. Heard and healed. Hear and heal. Well, I, I, I need help. I need help. You need to hear. I need to be healed. Hurry up and heal. Well, hurry up and hear. The reason I say this is because again and again, folks think they're waiting on God and they're pushing God, pushing for God. God, hurry up. Why don't you hurry up? Why don't you hurry up? Well, notice the verse started off with if. If you'll do this, I'm going to do this. And we must, not, uh, we must not think that we can just throw out the Word of God and say, Lord, yeah, I know, Lord, you said all that, but can we just do it a different way this time? You know, I, I, I don't have time for that. I don't want to do that. Could you just zap me? Just come on. Just <laughs> We got this going and that going and five devices and a backlog of emails and texts and tweets and whatever it is and no time to hear. That's a problem. Well, the scriptures say, be still and know that I am God. That's at times like that we can hear. They came to hear and to be healed of their diseases. And they that were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed. Didn't make any difference what, what the problem was, they were healed. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went virtue out of him and healed them all. Now let's just stop here. Why would they want to touch him? I want some answers. Why do all these people want to touch him? A lot of folks would say, well, it's because he's the son of God. They didn't know that. No, they didn't know that at all. They saw a man. Why did they want to touch him? We have no indication that there were crackles of light or fire around him or anything. In fact, Isaiah said there was nothing when you saw him that would cause you to desire him. Now, it had to be that way because how could the leaders treat him the way they did if there was a halo around his head? Right? How do you crucify somebody like that? They just saw a man. They didn't, they didn't see who he really was. Why did they want to touch him? Because of what they heard. We know what he preached. He told us one of the fir very first times in early days of his ministry. Uh, he got, had him get the scroll of the book of the prophet Isaiah. And he found the place where he is written, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because he's anointed me. Is that right? We have reason to believe he, he, that was his practice. And they, they're hearing about the anointing and faith comes by hearing. Their faith in the anointing came up. So much so, they believe the power of God is there. They believe it can change their body. They want to receive it. Yes. They want to receive it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why people wanted to touch him or they wanted him to touch them. Why? Because they had faith in healing power from hearing about healing power. Hallelujah. But before you're going to have faith, you've got to hear something. Which is why they came first to hear and then to be healed. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Go with me, please, to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 3. 
Now in Proverbs 3, actually the whole book of Proverbs deals with a recurring subject. And that is a, a good path and a bad path. The way of wisdom and righteousness and goodness and the way of wickedness and evil and error. And the wisdom of God is revealed in, in the book of Proverbs. How many like reading and hearing the book of Proverbs? Man, if you haven't, let me strongly encourage you. There will be times we'll, around the house we'll just put it on, uh, you know, playing on a device or something and, and just let it keep going. And, and sometimes just hearing half of a verse, uh, you'll get a glimpse of a truth. And it's the wisdom of God. Amen. Hearing. And uh, read this in Proverbs 3 and 1. He said, My son, forget not my law, but let your heart keep my commandments for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to you. Amen. Does it make any difference what you hear, yeah. what you listen to? Verse 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to your navel and marrow to your bones. Now we're going to keep seeing things like this. We're going to read four or five verses here. But something that's very important that we, we differentiate. It didn't say it will be like health. It will be health to your navel. Navel is flesh and marrow to your bones. Uh, Anybody remember 3 John 2? Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health. How? Even as your soul prospers. What even medical science is beginning to see more and more. The connection between the inner man and the outer man. But uh, modern science is way, way far away from actually acknowledging this in any substantial way. People like to think natural is just natural. And the reason why people want to keep it that way is because they don't want to acknowledge my relationship with God and my relationship with people has a huge bearing on every other part of my life. Folks don't want to acknowledge that. They just want to say, well, natural is natural. That's it. But what we see in the scriptures is that words can hurt and words can heal. And when people hear something like this, they think, well, he's talking emotionally. He didn't say he's talking emotionally. He said it's health. Because it is. And it's not hard to understand when you go back to the beginning of the book and see how matter came into existence to begin with. Through words. Words. If words created matter, the material universe, then it's perfectly understandable that words can restore matter that's damaged. This shouldn't be hard for us to grasp. Medical science is using sound waves to destroy a kidney stone. That's sound. What is a word? A word is a sound. And so what you got to, if you get that sound on the right frequency, it'll disintegrate something in your body. 
Well, if you get that sound on the faith frequency, <laughs> on the life frequency, on God's frequencies, it can, it can and will affect things in the material universe. Now that sounds like hocus pocus magic to some folks. But it's just, just people being in denial, like we've already said. We know sound can change matter. It's happening all around us. And the reason that's true is because matter was created by faith-filled word sounds. God said, light be, and light became and was and is. Where did it come from? How did it come? It came out of what you cannot see. And the way it came into being was through sound. Sounds uttered by the Creator. We need to meditate on this. I said we need to meditate on this. And begin to realize the power of faith-filled words. Words can be filled with healing. They can be filled with kindness. They can be filled with love, with faith, with joy. And that's not just something that's a good little pep talk for your intellect. Spirit-filled, faith-filled words change matter. They change the material. If not, what happened when Jesus spoke to the wind and waves? What happened when he spoke to the fig tree? What happened when he spoke to people and, and ministered to them healing and deliverance? Hmm? When he said, be loosed, be strong, rise and walk. They did. They got up and they walked. But they hadn't been able to do that sometime for years and decades. Something happened in their body. Right. What caused it to happen? A word. That's words. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say words, words, words. words. Oh, the devil does not want humanity to see this. Oh, he wants you to just use your words any kind of crazy way and have zero faith in them and say all kind of stuff you don't mean. Hmm? And then when you do mean it, only on the negative side. I'm not going to make it. We won't be able to get out of this. I never, I never get enough. This always works. If you believe it, you're releasing things into the world around you that's going to hurt you, that's going to restrict you. But if we speak God's words over ourselves, nothing is bigger than God's words. Nothing can overcome His words. Oh, it's a wise man or woman that'll speak God's words over themselves and their children and their finances and their bodies. Oh, man, if we'd realize the truth, something in our body started acting a little squirrely, we'd get stirred up, we'd say, Kidneys? Listen to me. In the name of Jesus, start working right. Be quickened. Come alive. Be healed in Jesus' name. Lungs, clear up. Infection, I curse you. I command you to dry, dry up and die in Jesus' name. Now, I know unbelievers think that's nuts. But they would say the same thing about Jesus. Did Jesus talk to trees and wind and wave and disease and fear and things you couldn't see? Yes. Well, are you a Christian? Yes. Christians act like the Christ. That's right. They talk like the Christ. That's right. They speak like the Christ. Right. Somebody say, I'm a Christian. I act like him. Had somebody try, try to tell me, say, who do you think you are? You just try and act like Jesus. Yeah. They thought they were insulting me. I said, well, who, who do you recommend I act like? Yeah. 
<laughs> you know somebody better for me to emulate? I thought that was the idea. <laughs> I thought that was the idea. Didn't he say, if you believe in me, the works I do shall you do also. Did he say it? Did he say it? Did he say it? Then he's not putting himself and what he did in a class unattainable to us. He's telling us he became like other men and showed us how to do it. My, my. It'll be health to your navel and marrow to your bones. Didn't say it'd be like. It is. Go to the fourth chapter in the 10th verse. 4.10. Proverbs 4.10. Hear, O my son. Starts out with what? Hear. Hear and receive my sayings. Will it make any difference? And the years of your life shall be many. If you do what? If you hear. Now, if, if you never go to church, you never read your Bible, you never hear in these things, or you go to a church that believes all this has passed away and only preaches social reform and politics and whatever else, then you, and all, the only thing you hear is about the problems in the atmosphere and the contaminants and, and uh, carcinogens and, and all these things and everything you eat and, and all the problems and, and weakening immune systems and the years of your life will be shortened. <laughs> if that's all you hear, you will expect something to happen. And you won't be shocked at all when you die early. But there's something else you could be listening to. He said, hear my sayings. Listen to what I'm telling you. Hmm? The Bible is not a, a popular book in most of the world. Oh, people are fine as long as you never open it. Oh, we respect the Bible. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, just open it and start talking about actually believing part of it. Oh, no, you lost them. Well, you need to keep that at home and don't bring that, you know. <laughs> keep reading. Verse 13. Verse 13, take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Does it make any difference what you hear? Yeah. Verse 18. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shines more and more unto the perfect day. If we're listening to him and going the way he's telling us to go, Hallelujah. it's a path of light, yes. not darkness. Amen. It's a path of life, you, not destruction. Amen. And it shines brighter Hallelujah. and gets brighter yep. right. and gets better. Yep. Keep reading verse 19. The way of the wicked, that's by contrast, is what? It's darkness, and they know not at what they stumble. They're tripping and falling and floundering and don't know why. Does that describe the ungodly world or not? And if you dared to mention, well, man, you need to come to God and you need to change what you say, a lot of them will look at you like you're nuts. What? That's got nothing to do with this. The Bible said it does. Yes. Our entire path of life is determined by us listening to him and following him. Amen. Believing what he said and saying what he said. Amen. Keep reading. My son, attend to my words as opposed to what? All the other stuff that's out there. Oh, friends, let, let me encourage you to discipline yourself to challenge what you believe. Attend to whose words? My words. I wish I could tell you that every sermon you ever heard was his words, but I can't tell you that. Right? Or that everybody that loved you, everything they told you about God was God's words, but I can't tell you that. 
There's a lot of things that people have said supposedly from God that's not God's words. And you want to attend to what? His words. Instead of what other people are saying. There are many voices in the world. None of them without signification. What does that mean? All of them are saying something. But they're certainly not all Him. And in this myriad, cacophony, that's a word, isn't it? Of voices, you got to pick out the one and go, no, that's Him. How are you, how are you going to be able to pick out Him from all these other voices? You need to hear what you know is His voice day and night. Yes. Yes. Which is why you ought to be reading your chapter every day. Is that right? Yes. And you need to be feeding on why? Because the same voice that you hear in Genesis is the same voice you hear in Proverbs. Amen. It's through a different human author, but it's the same voice. Yes. And you hear the very same voice in Mark and, and Luke and Acts and Corinthians and Revelation. It's the same voice. Yes. And when the more familiar you are with that voice, when you hear him saying about something else, it'll be familiar. You go, yeah, that's the same voice I heard this morning in, in uh, Mark. And it agrees with everything he's already said. Yes. Attend to what? My words. Why would you say it like that? Attend to my words as opposed to what? All this other stuff that's going on. Incline your ear to what? My. What I'm, what I'm saying to you. I know this may sound simple, but how many realize folks are missing it in this area? Big time. Right? I've had people come to me and, and you're trying to tell them the word and they say, yeah, but so and so. I said, well, where'd you get that? Where'd you hear that? When, why'd you decide to believe that? Well, I just, we just thought. Somebody said... So they're inclining their ears to something else. That's right. yeah. They're listening to something else. Yeah. That's right. Incline your ear to my sayings. Verse 21, let them not depart from your eyes. You know, when you hear something, you see it. Right? You, you, you see it. If I start to describe, if I say dog, you don't see a dolphin. Or a chicken. Right? <laughs> I'll describe Phyllis's dog. Uh, white Shih Tzu. Hmm? Big brown eyes. Brown spot. Snow white. Hmm? What's the picture is, but now, are you getting a picture? Yes. German Shepherd. Black. And yet, I didn't draw you any picture. You heard a sound wave bounced off your eardrum. It's amazing. It really is. And you get an image from a pressure wave that bounced off your eardrum. Now, the pressure wave is physical. The image is spiritual. <laughs> The image was not put into your mind physically. The image is spiritual. And the enemy is trying to get images in our mind and heart of destruction and failure. And there are many voices that would feed these images into us. And if you don't know better, you think you just have to listen to anything that anybody's saying, or especially if they're supposed to be an expert. But when you're a child of God and you understand this, you realize the words I need to hear are His words. And I need to let them create the image in me that He wants in me. And His words will create an image of victory, yes. hallelujah, of life, yes. of healing, yes. of strength, yes. of prosperity, yes. of blessing. Yes. The path, his words will lead you down a path that the image gets brighter and brighter and better. Amen. You listen to the wrong thing, it'll make you depressed. 
It'll pull you down. You get that bad image in you. Don't let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. <laughs> I, uh, you know, we're believing for this aircraft. Uh, and, you know, I, those of you that have been around us for a while, you know, there is absolutely no showmanship, no hidden agendas. There's nothing. We didn't have any of that or know how to do it. But we're releasing faith. And I can see us going to these conferences. I can see us. Come on, are you with me? Taking a team and coming in to a group of people that maybe are discouraged or confused about some things. And before the, the three days are over or the week is over, they're up. They're shouting. They got their answers. Hallelujah. They're not going to leave their church. They're going to get bigger. Hallelujah. They're not going to stop the ministry. They're going to go do more for Jesus. I can see it. I can see it. And then I can see us crossing an ocean and coming back seeing your smiling face and telling you about the good reports. And you're going, hallelujah. We knew it. We knew it. We talked about back in January. We could see it then. But if you listen to the wrong thing, oh, yeah. how in the world are you going to do something that takes that much money? How in the world? How in the world? How in the world? If you listen to this about the economy, or you look at this about politics, or about the world, or about this or the other, that will paint another image. Yes. Well, I don't know if we'll be able to do that, at least not now. Uh -huh. And all you need to do is let that image come and sit on you for a little while. And, and you're, you're not letting it depart from your eyes. It's persistent. It's spiritual. You're not going to make it. 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 There's no way. You'll never get to that. That's too much. It's too much. How? It's too big. It'll take too long. How? It can't, it can't work. Those words paint a picture too. Yes, they do. They paint an image. What is the Lord saying? My son, my daughter, attend to my words. <laughs> oh, can you hear it? The Spirit of God is speaking right now. He's saying, quit listening to all that other stuff. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to what I'm telling you. Listen to what I've already told you. Let me bring it back to your remembrance. Let me show you this again. Hmm? And if you'll let, uh, attend to my words, incline your ear to my say. What is that? That's tuning. Mm -hmm. Incline means to lean. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. It'd be like you telling me something and I'm leaning in going, huh? Mm -hmm. Tell me that again. Yeah. Yeah. Am I inclining? Yeah. <laughs> I'm tuning in. I'm saying, I, I like that. I want to hear that again. I like your words. I want to hear your words. What do you say about it? Oh, friend, th this needs to be a standard thing. We should ask before we hear a bad report what he's saying about it. But if we don't, and you get a bad report, don't just let that to be, be the only word on the subject. Step back and go, Lord, what do you say about this? Come on. <laughs> Lord, what do you say about this? And when you do, what are you doing? You're, you're, in, you're, you're getting ready to attend. You're inclining. What do you say about this? You know, remember when David and uh, his men were gone and the enemy came to their town, Ziklag, and burned it to the ground and took all their wealth and their kids and their wives, everybody. When they got back, it's just a smoldering heap. And these big strong warriors, the Bible said they cried till they couldn't cry anymore. And they're so upset, they're talking about killing David. I guess they decided, well, he had us out there on a campaign. We could have been here, whatever the reason. You know, when you're hurting, you want to blame somebody. Exactly. Many people do. But instead of just doing that, what did the Bible say? He cried too. But he got to a point where the Bible said he encouraged himself 
in the he began to look to the Lord, and then he said, we got to inquire of the Lord. Yeah. Instead of just saying, this is the end, my life is over, all I got is a pile of ashes for my whole life up to this point, my wife's gone, my kids are gone, I cannot go on. What did he say? Yeah. Let's ask the Lord. Let's ask the Lord about this. And when they did, he gave them another picture. He said, rise up and pursue and you will recover everything. Amen. Now that's another picture. Yeah. I said, that's another picture. Can you see the image uh, of, of finding and, and getting, you, getting your wife and kids and getting your stuff and, and everything being okay. You can build that house back. Come on, can you see this? Yeah. What a picture. And instead of just sitting in the, in the ash heap crying, he believed that and acted on it and it came to pass. Yes. My son, attend to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Don't let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Is that something you just do for a few minutes on Friday night? No. Huh? Or a few minutes on Sunday morning? No. Let's make it a, a, just a, a lifestyle, a way of life. No matter what kind of bad report we hear, we say, Lord, what do you say about this? Lord, I, I want to know what you say. I heard what they said. I want to know what you say. Hmm? Lord, what do you say about this? And then when you, when you hear what he says, what do you do? You keep that going over in your mind. You keep that in front of your eyes. You keep that. The Lord said. The Lord said. The Lord said. Uh, Phyllis will tell you this, that, you know, we're learning, we're growing, and practicing that. And when I hear something from the Lord, I'm like a broke record. You can ask me 90 times, and I'll just tell you the same phrase. Because if you've heard from Him, that's it. Right? And you got to keep that in front of you. Because that's what's going to sustain you through all the stuff that would try to wear you down. Or he, No, he said this. He said this. Hmm? He said something to us about this series. Healings. Huh? Healings like popcorn popping. That paints an image. Doesn't it? Did I just come up with that? If I did, then that's not something we need to meditate on. But if he said it through us, yes. that's right. Amen. if it's his words, yes. then we need to go around thinking, popcorn popping, popcorn <laughs> popping. Yeah. Here a healing, there a healing, everywhere a healing. <laughs> pop, pop, pop. That's right. Another one heal. That's Another right. three heal. Yeah. Another dozen heal. Healed, 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 healed. And it's already begun because it begins with hearing. Hear and be healed. Keep reading. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Why? Why do all this? Why do this? For they are what? Life. Didn't say they are like life. They are life to those that find them, and they are what? Health to all their flesh. Words heal. God's words. They're life to those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it for the issue, are the issues of life. One translation says, guard your heart. How would you guard it? Well, just back up to the other verse. Don't listen to the wrong thing. Don't look at the wrong thing. Don't meditate on the wrong thing. Because if you do, the wrong thing gets in your heart. You've got to be guarded. There are times, you know, you, you know I, I don't need to hear that. We don't need to talk. Let's change the subject. I don't need to talk about that. Hmm? Hmm? And, and, and sometimes they're, they're well-meaning folks, right. loved ones, family members. They're calling the phone. 
Honey, how you doing? Now, don't tell me that faith stuff, how you really feel. <laughs> and if you, if, if you want a good outcome, you cannot stay on the phone and, and, and describe your symptoms because you watch what will happen. You'll be on there for an hour and a half and then you hang up and, and it won't be too long. Somebody else will call you. And guess what they want to know? How do you really, now come on, I, I know, I know you believe in God and all that, but how do you feel? How do you really feel? The enemy is trying to get you to attend to something else and get a different, different image in you. And we love our people, but if they don't understand it, we must not let them cause something that shouldn't happen. Just say, I, I'm, I don't need to talk about that right now. That's right. Amen. How's the weather down there? <laughs> what have you been up to? Right? right. And, and, and if they want to talk negative, you don't need to help them to attend to the wrong thing either. You need to say, well, well what about this? And try to shift the conversation. That's right. You do not have to let people just pour unbelief and death into your ear for minute after minute after minute. Amen. It's dangerous to do it. If you do so, you're not guarding your heart. You don't have to be mean, but you don't have to do it either. <laughs> he said, their life to those that find them, their health to all their flesh, Keep your heart with all diligence. Out of it are the issues of life. Put away from you a froward mouth. Perverse lips put far from you. Let your eyes look right on. Your, your eyelids look straight before you. He's still talking about staying on the path. Ponder the path of your feet. Let all your ways be established. Turn not to the right hand or to the left hand. Remove your foot from evil. Once you've heard from him, you stay on that. Uh, skip over to, to the 12th chapter. That was Proverbs 4. Go to Proverbs 12 and 18. Just re confirming, building these things into us. There is that speaks like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. Now, it's one, he says, it's like the piercing of a sword. It's not the piercing of a sword. But the other is health. The BBE says, there are some whose uncontrolled talk is like the wounds of a sword. But the tongue of the wise makes one well again. Wise people, spiritually, understand and you, they don't just talk to be talking. They, they use their words to accomplish an outcome. <laughs> they speak to effect. I don't like the phrase, I'm just saying. I don't like that phrase at all. It's a bad idea. You don't need to be just saying at any time. You either ought to be saying it or you ought not be saying it. And if you ought to be saying it, you ought to be releasing faith Amen. with what you're saying. And I, I'm not telling you it's all easy. There'll be times you'll want to say a bad thing so much you'll have to bite your lip. And why is it that way? Because the enemy is pressuring you. Yeah. He wants you to hurt yourself. Yeah. Like the piercing of a sword. He wants you to stab yourself. And man, you, 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 I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that. And then five minutes later, you'll almost say it. And you'll think, what is the deal? Well, spiritually, the enemy is trying to push that in your mind and get you to say it. And you've got to bite your lip and say no. I'm not saying that. Yeah, but you feel like that. It looks like that. Yeah, but that's not going to help me. I need to say something that's going to help me. That's right. And if I'm wise with my words, 
it can minister healing. Yes. Healing. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. 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 Easy to read says, speak without thinking and your words can cut like a knife. Be wise and your words can heal. Most people would believe that you can speak bad words and hurt people and cut people. They got no problem believing that. Well, why not believe the rest of the verse? You can speak other words and heal. Healing comes in. Just like hurting came in, healing came in. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Just a couple more. Can you take a couple more? Yes. Proverbs 15. 15, 4. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. But perverseness therein, now you got to stop there, perverseness in the tongue is a breach in the spirit. Let's read some other translations. The uh, CEV, Complete English, says, kind words are good medicine. Deceitful words can really hurt. The New English translation says, speech that heals is like a life-giving tree, but a perverse tongue breaks the spirit. The new century, as a tree gives fruit, healing words give life, but dishonest words crush the spirit. Are we talking about imagined effects or real effects? Real effects. Most everybody would agree you hearing certain things could just have a, a feeling of overwhelming you and just jerking the rug out from under you or hurting you. Right. Most everybody believe that. Yes. Well, the other half of the verse says, if you say a, an anointed faith-filled word, it can heal you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Restore you. Yes. Make you whole. As a minister, Phyllis and I have experienced some of this. This is one of the... This, there are challenging parts to the ministry, but this is one of the most enjoyable part. Again and again, there's been situations where we're looking to him, Lord, what, what, what are you saying? What do we say? And the Lord will give you a word. I've, uh, I've had him supernaturally deal with me, call so-and-so. Hadn't thought about him for months. I called him, and their secretary didn't answer. They answered, and they said, Brother Keith, why are you calling me? I didn't know right then. I just felt impressed too. I said, uh, I just thought I should call you. What are you doing? He said, I was on my knees right now praying, asking God for help about a certain thing. He began to share a little bit. I said, stop, stop. Don't say anything else. Because as he did, the Lord gave me something. I said it to him. And I heard him drop the phone. <laughs> and I heard shouting <laughs> and dancing. <laughs> Before then, he was upset. He was concerned. He didn't know what. I didn't do that. The Lord gave a word. He's answering his prayer. He's in the floor praying. Can you see this? And that word, it, it just solved the problem in his mind. A man can't come up with a word like that. It, it put strength into him. It comforted him. Did you know God would use you to do this? Same type of thing for your friends, for your spouse, for your children, for your grandchildren. Don't just, don't be so quick to throw up your hands and go, we don't know what to do. We don't know what to do. It's a mess. No, just stop. Ask back up and say, Lord, what do you say about this? What have you already said? What are you saying? What do you say? And there'll be time and, and time again, he'll give you a word. And as the proverb said, it's like apples of gold in pictures of silver. It is the perfect thing. 
and you'll tell them. And when you do, you'll see the frustration leave their face. You'll see a light come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when it does, don't you take credit for that. If you say, How'd you know to say that? You say, I didn't. I did not till the Lord gave it to me. Right. Hallelujah. It wasn't you that came up with it. It was Him. But can His words heal? Can His words restore? Can they bring life? Hallelujah. And light. Oh, thank you, Lord. 1624. Look, I think this is the last one. Six to, the last one in Proverbs. Let me say it like that. <laughs> 1624 says, pleasant words are as a honeycomb. Now, now when he's talking as, he says as. They're like a honeycomb. But they're not like sweet, they are sweet to the soul, and they are what? Health. Health to the bones. Good words, pleasant words, words that come from Him. Can you say amen? amen. Oh, thanks be unto God. Thanks be. Look, John 6 51, just put it on the screen. I think I can close with this. John 6, uh, 51, and I'm going to quote to you from Hebrews 4 while we're doing that. The Bible said the Word of God is quick and it's powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Can God speak a word that will penetrate through everything and go right down into you? He spoke light into existence. He spoke life into existence. Why would it be a thing thought strange that his words could alter matter when his words created matter? And his words are all over the matter. Triumph over any matter, no matter what's the matter. <laughs> Jesus said, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he'll live forever. And the bread that I give is my flesh which I give for the life of the world. Now, when we say, when he says the bread I give is my flesh, this book, John 1, starts off by saying the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. When he's saying, take of, of his flesh, he's saying it is bread. The, he said another place, man does not live by bread alone, but by what? Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And just like you eat food and part of it becomes part of you, then God's words can come into you and become part of you. That's how Jesus was born, of a virgin. That's right. A word came from heaven, and he told her what was going to happen. And the power of the highest was going to overshadow her, and she said, Be it unto me according to your word. Yeah. And the word literally became flesh. Did it happen or not? Yes. Well, the Word is still becoming flesh. The Word of healing, the Word of deliverance, the Word of righteousness, the Word of provision, the Word of protection, all have the power to manifest in this physical realm. Amen. In verse 63, verse 63, they didn't understand what he was talking about. In fact, a lot of people left Jesus, never came back to his meetings, and, and never gave any offerings again, or said, take my name off the list after this eat my blood, drink my flesh message. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. And, and he summed it up by saying this. No, they're focusing on flesh and blood. He said, listen, listen. It's the spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. We can do all kinds of stuff in the flesh. It won't accomplish anything. But 
the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Hallelujah. Oh, friend, for every situation, there's a word. Hmm? For every need, for every thing you don't know how to deal with it or how to what to do about it, there is a word from on high that can come right through you because he's in you. And when you got that word, attend to that word. Incline your ear to that word. Keep that word in front of your eyes. Don't let it depart from the midst of your heart. And it will manifest. It will be life to those that find it and health and medicine to all their flesh. No wonder all those folks came and heard and got healed. Because they were hearing something that would heal them. Can you say amen? Stand on your feet, everybody.